this is Gears of War 3. We're here on Xbox Series X where the game is now FPS boosted. Now this one is a little bit different from its other 316 original Xbox counterparts that got FPS boosted today. This one actually requires you to go and manually turn on the FPS boost in the settings. That means basically the resolution will take a hit, but you will enjoy a smooth 60 FPS experience. That is just totally worth it. Seriously, it is well worth it. So what exactly are we getting here? We're now getting 60 FPS, which is fluid, smooth, feels great across all the experiences that you enjoy within Gears 3. And there are a wide range of modes that you can play that we'll be talking about over the course of this and showing off, uh, you know, some of the options that are present uh, across these different variations. So the resolution, and this is according to L Analysta to Bits, which is a channel that digs deep in tools wise and regards to specific elements of uh, videos and comparisons, it runs at 1440p. So this is a drop from the 4K resolution that I enjoyed with the Xbox One X enhancement. I do think that this is actually a happy medium. And if you notice that there was a skip there, that was because I was trying to show the 360 emulated menu because I was trying to do like a, a direct kind of comparison. Like I spent a, a lot of time kind of looking back and forth and it was very clear that this was, you know, obviously running very fluid, but also running at a higher resolution than the original version, which is like sub, sub 720p. But it also wasn't quite as clean as the full 4K version. So definitely makes sense to me that it was around there. I was assuming there was some sort of upscale to 4K was kind of the focus with this one. I would, highly suggest playing in this mode though seriously it is the perfect mix between the two options i think delivers fluidity with a solid resolution quality and hopefully someday we'll be able to revisit you know maybe on a future console and have enough overhead power for us to be able to get you know both options but this is very much a clean version of this experience and i would 100% suggest going into the settings and turning on the fps boost because it is worth the hit and it still looks very clean and smooth as you're seeing visually i think it looks fantastic and with that we'll be diving into you know just the regular chat of the video and the review overall about this game gears of war 3. so anyways this game delivers uh, brothers to the end story the final chapter in the gears of war original trilogy it follows marcus once again, working with Dom, the legendary Coltrane, running on whole grain, and also Baird's there. And along with some new characters, Anya joins the fight, we've got Jace, we've got uh, Sam, and we've got some other characters that you run into throughout the events of this scenario. Where things haven't gone the best, you know, it's, it's really the end of these people on the planet of Sarah, where it's eating swords, or so it seems, until a message from Marcus's mysteriously long lost and thought dead father appears calling Marcus back into the battle in order to perhaps save everyone. That's kind of the gist of the situation, that's where we get this dream sequence here and it kind of sets the stage for what this third and final entry in the original trilogy is aiming to provide. So Gears of War 3 is a phenomenal title. We're starting by showing off the campaign portion of the game, then we'll show off the multiplayer portion of the game while talking about horde mode in the multiplayer, but not specifically showing horde mode because uh, I don't know if we need to really focus on that. But anyways, this is the campaign. You can play it by yourself. You can play it in co-op. Uh, the collector's edition of the game is right here. I have that. Kind of funny. This also supports four-player co-op, so you can play it with a group, and that actually might be part of why the FPS boost drops the resolution in this one, is that it's a little bit more demanding to have so many players in comparison to, say, Gears War 2. So this was a really good, you know, sort of upgrade to that original experience of the Gears War series. It was a lot more cinematic focused. It was very emotional. It was very intensive. And I think it was something that delivered a very thoughtful time that wrapped things up beautifully well for this original trilogy. You know, you get some really deep emotional beats, particularly between Marcus and Dom here, which I thought were absolutely fantastic in how they were handled and in what it delivered. And then you also had a comprehensive and just really expansive 
multiplayer that had all these like all this content. It was really great. So you can play the game campaign-wise regularly, or you can also do the arcade mode, which is a bit sillier, a bit more fun. And I'm kind of almost regretting not turning that on because you can do really silly things where you get like super run with like a fire kind of like you're like a comic kind of going around or like insta gib. I think there's like big head mode or something. The game was also littered with Easter eggs because they had, I think it was like an extra year delay or something for polish and whatnot in order to get it ready for the holiday season. Which at the time I was a little disappointed about, but I think in the long run we got a very good, well running game that was just fantastic. I, I really liked this one. Uh, I thought it was very well done. It dove into the stories of the different characters. Aren't I supposed to get? Isn't he supposed to say something, or did I miss that? The old man still takes the threat seriously. Folks seem to forget how it up like this. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, well, not me. Anyways, I, I really did think they did a, a great job wrapping this all up. And then, if the campaign's not enough, there was a DLC where you actually got to play as General Ram and the bad guys as you were just these intense creatures messing things up. Oh, look who it is. How's Anya doing? This better be good. Good? Probably not. A shock? Yeah. Guess who's come back from the dead? Do I get a prize if I'm right? <laughs> Chairman Prescott. Whoa. No shit. You mean ex Chairman Prescott? That asshole. He ran out on us 18 months ago. What's he expecting now, red carpet? I'm waiting to find out. Warship Sovereign. Hang on. This is KR-01 requesting permission to land. One passenger, Chairman Prescott. KR-01, this is Sovereign. You are clear to land. Deck team standing by. Wonder where Prescott managed to find a helicopter. He sure as hell didn't leave with one. He never called, he never sent flowers. Oh, I can't wait to hear this shit. I'll get the popcorn. Uh oh. Damn, stocks are gonna do some real damage one day. Maybe right now. So these are the lambent. These are the newest threats, kind of teased and showcased right towards the end of Gears of War 2. They are a new problem that is kind of arising from below and pushing the locusts to become more and more desperate. So it's kind of like a three-way battle as all the different factions face off in this one for basically supremacy of the planet. And it seems as though the Lambents have the upper hand on everybody. I will happily chainsaw this creature to get my 60 FPS chainsaw action. But this is definitely the way that Gears of War was meant to be played at 60 FPS. This is as close as I think we'll get short of them actually spending the time to remaster this, which I would absolutely love. It feels so smooth, and it looks ever so good. So we're just going to skip this because we want to show off a little bit more combat before we switch on to the multiplayer portion of the experience. Oh, and if you like uh, shoot down the little holes here, I always like doing it. There's like a giant flaming chicken thing that comes out. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool easter egg, at least I think it is. I'm feeling the uh, the pain of these guys shooting at me here, but it feels so good with the high fluidity. Absolutely fantastic. Very, very happy here with this frame rate increase, but let's jump over to that multiplayer action. So this is the multiplayer portion of the game. I will firstly talk about the horde mode. So it basically takes the multiplayer maps that exist and provide wave-based scenarios. And you will be using these fortifications in order to defend yourself against the oncoming waves. There's boss waves too, which is kind of intensive. And you'll have to deal with those with everything from like Brumox to, I don't know, these crazy berserker type characters and even Lambent ones. They're, they're kind of nuts. 
So that's a pretty cool mode. A lot of people like it. I still think it's actually quite fun to get a group of individuals together to do some horde. It can be a fun night. But let's talk about the multiplayer. So I actually really like the multiplayer in this. And as you can tell, we actually have real players. Uh, it looks like a full match of real players too, so I'm not used to that. But yeah, you get some gnarly weapons. And it feels incredibly better at, at 60 fps like it just smooths everything out to such a high degree it's actually pretty hard to go back and uh, play the regular version because I, I was doing a little bit of you know testing this out with the the non-fps boost on and i thought it looked really like, i guess you'd say janky really awkward and now you play this version and it's just it's smooth it's it's really weird how much of a difference in, in really this particular title with the running and whatnot how smooth it can actually feel. It's, it's just fantastic. I love it. And, you know, you look at the environment too, and you can see, like, water and everything like that. It, it's just so much more fluid, which is fantastic. Actually, that is, uh, is gone. That's not there anymore. Huh. And this really did advance the multiplayer in many ways, in terms of the number of weapons, the, the game modes, uh, the content updates. It had a bunch of colorful skins. I bought the whole pack. I think it was like 60 bucks or something at the time. I got all the gun skins. Eh, it was it was worth it. I played a lot of this game. I had fun with it. It was a better time to be able to buy, you know, actual microtransaction costs because you get sets of weapons for like everything in the game, you know. It wasn't just like buying one weapon skin. You bought sets of them. And you could see what you were buying. It was like 30 something sets. Oh. So as I was saying, the sets of skins were really, really cool. Oh, this map is going to be great for this because you can see the fluidity of like the snow falling down. So, so cool. Like particle effects in games when they're running at high frame rates are just fantastic. Yeah, I guess somebody quit the other match and I don't know if they were just getting sour or whatnot, but yeah. It, it just, like overall, it feels phenomenally better. And I think the camera and everything like that, it, it's just a, such a crazy improvement in regards to how it handles. And this is obviously a very laggy match and whatnot, but you get what you get for an older game, right? You take the host options you have and you try to have a good time with it. But this definitely means that doing some more future throwback, throwback livestream nights are going to be a blast, because I, I really love these Gears of War titles. I had so much fun with them, you know, over the years, so come on, the lag is making it hard for me to be able to chainsaw these guys, I'm not liking it. I would imagine, yeah, it's a combo of... Oh, it's actually almost all real players except for the one. That's funny. But yeah, you just had this huge range of weapons. I wasn't huge on, like, the sawed-off, though, the Retrolancer. I found those kind of annoying, like, the whole time of the multiplayer on this one. So I didn't necessarily love it as much as uh, previous entries, but I thought this was a really, really great multiplayer experience and kind of the definitive Gears game. It really put together everything they had been, you know, working towards over the last two and was just such a showcase of what, you know, basically the Xbox could do at the time, Xbox 360. It was a really big, powerful showcase and I, I loved it. I spent, you know, many, many hours, you could tell, kind of by my prestige, I would imagine, that I put a good amount of time into this. But not just this, you know, also playing campaign, playing Horde. Uh, enjoying the game with friends, and I, I think it's just a, a really good time. And it's amazing that you can kind of experience this map and this game how it was supposed to be experienced, or even better than it was supposed to be experienced by having this frame rate. And outside of, again, me really hoping that we someday maybe get a Gears collection similar to, you know, the, the Chief collection, I think this is kind of what we get. And yeah, now wouldn't that be sick though, having a Gears game where all the uh, the maps and stuff were all just kind of like cycled through and... Uh, dreams, am I right? But for now, I'm, I'm very happy with this. This is, this is a great way to experience it. I think they delivered on providing us with the fluidity that we could have hoped for and all of the action we could want. And I mean, it had so many great maps, you know, returning maps, new maps. They did like elemental things, they did, you know, unique stuff with the multiplayer, but it was holy Gears of War. And I think that in itself is kind of a, a cool thing to take in, except for this leg. No wonder our team's dropping out, the guy's got 53 kills, I, I bet you any money is the, the host is lagging, but anyways. Take what you can get for the old days, right? But there are a bunch of different modes, and you can still find people in them. And even if people aren't there, you can play with bots, you know? Like, the bots are always going to be there. So as long as they keep the 360 servers going, you'll always be able to enjoy 
what this experience has to offer, and I think that is fantastic because it is a great game. <laughs> it's still worthwhile today, seriously. There's like so much content in this one, from the, the campaign stuff, to the arcade within the campaign, to competing in the multiplayer, to doing horde mode, and I think all of the DLC at this point is free, I believe so. So that makes it a little bit easier. That was a waste of the Cindy grenade. You know what goes right through the leg? The chainsaw at 60 FPS. It's beautiful. Especially with this Xbox green gun skin thing. Yeah, you know what's kind of funny is I spent all this money on like the gun skins, but then my one pal from the States I think went to Jack in the Box or something and got me this Xbox green sort of gun skin set up, and I think that's my favorite one. Oh jeez, I thought it was execution rules. Oh no, it is not. And this is King of the Hill, by the way, in case you were wondering. But no, it's fantastic. Seriously. This is the best way to enjoy Gears 3. Outside of the lag, not every match is going to be lagging like this. You know what I mean. It, it's the best way to enjoy the game, and just having this fluidity here, I think, is perfect. It, it really is just perfect. I love this. I... <laughs> It's like a dream come true, almost, for these games, like the Gears franchise, like literally all of them are running now at 60 FPS, like across the board, I think. You know, the original Gears, Gears 2, 3, Judgment, 4, 5, all, like, <laughs> Ultimate Edition, uh, they, they're really taking care of this one through the backwards compatibility, more so than I think many other franchises, and that is awesome. Oh, and there was these crazy skill challenges that you had to do. I don't know if you call them skill challenges, but like to get like these ribbons of efficiency in order to get seriously you had to kill like thousands of guys with different stuff and it was uh that was a lot. I, I mean I didn't even do it because who's got the time? But uh yeah no there was a lot of that present which is crazy. So bravo to those that actually did you know brave the storm to go and earn that. It's uh, quite an accomplishment that's for sure. We got it. This feels so good! Yeah, we're definitely doing some event nights with this one, I'm thinking. It looks so cool, the maps are good, there's so many maps to it, and I, I really don't have that much else to say about that one, and this one in general. We've talked about all the content in it. That's Gears of War 3 FPS boosted. Uh, just enjoy some more regular gameplay action, I guess, because... Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun. Baby! 